Medieval manuscripts have a reputation for being incredibly difficult to read. They are written in dead languages, they are written in unfamiliar scripts, and on top of all of that, they use abbreviations that simply don't appear in modern versions of the Latin script. So today I'm going to show you a, how to decipher a passage from Bodleian Library Manuscript Lord Misc 250 using a few really excellent online resources that are available to you. This passage right here says, Hoc quod nos modo invisibilis conditor equanimiter portat. Now, if you're new to either Latin or manuscripts, you might be wondering how on earth you would arrive at that. Well, the first word, if you zoom in, hopefully that's clear enough, H-O-C, hoc. But the next, the next thing here, this is slightly tricky because originally you can see there's actually two different shades of ink here. Originally it would have just said, had been a Q with a stroke through it. Um, that in itself actually means quad. But then afterwards, uh, it's another scribe added a superscript O and a D there. Um, that same person also added, changed the piece of punctuation right there. So, and that also means quad. So obviously the scribe, this person's agenda was just to basically make this manuscript a bit easier to read, perhaps out loud. Now the book that medievalists have turned to for well over a century is Capelli's Lexicone Previa Turarum. This book is available, is, is now in the public domain, so it's available on archive.org. You can see, for example, um, it just simply sorts abbreviations of, alphabetically by the letters in the abbreviation, not the word. So, for example, an N with a stroke on top of it, that's a very common abbreviation for known. And the number in the right-hand column there is the century in which Capelli and his associates actually observed this abbreviation. Now this information is not always reliable. Known, for example, can appear before the 12th century and it can appear, it can appear in printed 16th century books. And so this is a nice guide if, for example, you're looking at a manuscript you know is from the, say, the 8th century and the abbreviation is said to be from the 15th or the 16th century. Um, that might give you some pause to wonder, say you're, you have two different forms of known here. Um, if, if, if you're trying to be, decide between them, that would probably, that can be a useful indication, but it's not something you should rely on. Now there's also a useful, if you're the I should say that the physical version of Capelli is probably easier to use than the scan. It's, in fact, much easier. But there's also a searchable online version of it through the University of Zurich website. You can search either by the letters in the abbreviation or by reverse search, searching for the word that it expands to. And it'll give you a scan of Capelli and then you can just, so you can search through here. Here's our cue with the stroke, with a sort of squirrel tail sort of affair. Um, so that's quad, you can see. And then if we keep going down, we'll eventually find our Q with the superscript O and a D in both a magical and minuscule forms. Let's keep going here. Uh, nose. And then we have an M with a superscript O. Now we could search for this again, but let's go to another database here. This is Abbreviaciones. This is a subscription database. However, it's not very expensive, so most libraries have access to it. This allows you to, to this is, has a, more or less has more material in it. It also has a much better search function than the free Capelli. So you can search for either an abbreviation that's exactly as it is, as it, uh, you can search for letters beginning with an abbreviation, you get the idea. So here we can type M, and you can type a superscript by using your shift key, so M-O, and that will give you a number of examples. Could be Magistro, maybe, but Magistro Invisibilis, I don't think so. Mayo, no. Uh, Milesimo, definitely not. Ah, uh, Modo, and what you'll notice here is 
that Modo is actually cited in from a number of manuscripts. By the way, anything that only has a century marker that's just copied from Capelli, anything with a specific manuscript citation, that's something that the creators of the Abbreviationes database have added. And so you can you can see that this is Modo appears right from the 9th up to the 15th century. So you have a pretty good idea that that's probably what you're looking for in this case, if it actually fits the sense. And now the next word, however, invisibilis. Now this probably, this might not, not oppose, this may not actually pose any problems for you because there is actually a nice little stroke over the eye in this case. Uh, however, if this were a microfilm, that would almost certainly have disappeared. Um, and you might be a bit, if you're new to Latin, you might be confused by this series of minims right here. A minim, of course, is just a vertical stroke that makes up a, a um, it's just the building block of medieval letters. And so you might be wondering, is this an IU? Is this U? I, what exactly are we dealing with here? Well, for that, there's a really wonderful database called Enigma. This is by Marjorie Berghardt at the Université de Lyon. So we know that the word begins with I, but then after that, even if you have an hour of paleography, you'll know that a macron over any vowel will mean that there's a missing nasal, for so either an M or an N but let's say we don't know. So we have an I, then you can put in a wild card after that, and then we can put our three minims, and then sibilis, and that will give us only two options, indivisibilis, I don't think so, invisibilis, perfect. Now we can move on, conditor. Now con, that backward C, uh, that can be either con or com, most commonly. You can actually type that directly into abbreviationes by using shift at, and then conditor, let's see what happens here. You won't get anything now. So instead you might say begins with condi, that's because it's such a common abbreviation of course, and, it, and but if you really want confirmation that you are in the right, going in the right, right, in the right direction, you can see all sorts of other examples of words that begin with con, such as, say, conditio right here. And so you can be absolutely certain that that indeed is not anything other than conditor. And then equanimiter. Now here you might, again, we have strokes on the eyes, but you could still be, we could be still confused by that. And you might be wondering, is that, what exactly is that little stroke doing there? Is it equanimit, um, equanimit tour? That's also, you can see the ur sign right there, but that's something that beginning students often mix up. So let's again turn to Enigma for this one. So we know it's E-Q-U-A, and then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven minims, and then T, and then something at the end. So we'll just use a wild card. And once again, we have we have only five options, which is wonderful. So we know it's equanimit something, and uh, equanimiter is the only option that fits the context. It's like a very difficult crossword. And then the last word is porta. There's not too much that's difficult there. Let's take another word here, perhaps, in nubibus. So again, I something, one, two, three, four minims, and then B-I-B, -I -B, and then like, not sure what that is. Now that, of course, and no result. Oh dear, what's, what, what are we doing wrong here? And well, then you might remember, okay, the B with, um, with a little stroke there, either like a three or sometimes it's a semicolon that's boos, um, but so there's nothing at all. So what's wrong here? Well, perhaps we mistranscript that I, because of course, we, if we have a wild card there, it'll just show us everything. And okay, we have 42 hits. That's quite a lot. And none of them appear to, uh, you might say at this point, perhaps you might think, okay, it's im something. But then if you look closer at the list, you'll see that there's nothing that would fit that pattern of minims right there. And by this time, it's probably dawned on you that you're not looking at two words, at one word, but in fact, at two words in nubibus, because the last result here is simply nubibus, which fits it perfectly. So let's move on here, nubibus. Oh, 
here's another perhaps potentially difficult word, uh, ver tuntur. So here, you, and then something after, let's say we don't know what that is, and then we have a bunch of minims, and then two more minims, t, two more minims, and an r. Well, here we have 30, 36 hits. Well, that if we switch that to a u, we'll get fewer. No, we won't. Um, but you, you can see that if we, if we looked look at the pattern of the number of minims here, you can probably guess that it's going to be something ending in untor. So let's switch that. And then this narrows it down to only five, and vertuntor is really the only, we can see that it's definitely not utuntor, it's certainly not ulkiskuntor. Uh, vinkuntor, well, it's, it's certainly a T. You can see that Enigma is clever enough to see that to know that C and T is easily mixed up. Um, so that means that Vertuntor is absolutely the only option that's left available to us. And so even if you think you don't know as much medieval Latin as the people have gone before you, you can still use these tools to often make more accurate transcriptions than what we've had in the past.